Hi, welcome back to another edition of the Mainframe uh, here on blotech.com and also WGRE.net. We appreciate you watching these videos so you can learn a little bit more about how to keep uh, all the sensitive data on your computers and your hardware working and all types of subjects that have to do with uh, technology and information. And Paul Blau is my guest every time we do this. And Paul uh, is here today to talk a little bit about something that maybe you've never even really thought of. And maybe it's something that you just think of when you think of spy movies, and that is uh, encryption. Mm -hmm. But, you know, encryption is something, Paul, that is important for, uh, for everyone and their daily life if you're using a computer, especially in, if you're in business. Now, we're going to talk about two different types of encryption today. First is the kind of encryption where if you have an email and you're sending it out to someone mm -hmm. and you don't want anybody to read it or, or a, a, a file or some data, you can encrypt that before it leaves your computer and goes somewhere else. Right. The other type of encryption you want to talk about uh, real briefly is the type of encryption that keeps all that information that is currently on your computer encrypted. So if you are at Starbucks and you get up uh, to go get a refill and you come back and your laptop's gone. Right. The guy in the parking lot can't be reading all your financial information. So let's uh, first uh, bite off uh, this, this big chunk and that, and that is encryption going out or coming in. Now, mm -hmm. um, encrypting email, right. is that automatically done no. by, by people like Gmail, you, no. uh, Yahoo, all that kind of stuff? Absolutely not. No. Yeah, so basically the idea is um, email is a plain text language, and so when it communicates, it's very transparent and very, very open. And the same thing is true with text messages, which we can think of as a, as a type of email. Um, right. It's an instant message group. Um, and that, those messages are also typically unencrypted, uh, with a few uh, exceptions from that. So with text messaging and with email, um, what you have is the very sensitive information a lot of times. Um, it could be uh, financial information, say if you're a CPA or you're sending information to your CPA, you may send your P&L or send um, you know, bank information, things like that. And if you don't do it in an encrypted way, it's possible for a third party to intercept that email along the, uh, the lines. Now, I think we all think of that what happens is, is that my computer hands it to your computer and then that, and nothing is in between, but that really isn't the case. It, my computer hands it off to a mail server, that mail server hands it off to a transport through an internet service provider that may go through some other things like spam filters and uh, various other checks which are other computers. And so we really can touch a lot of different computers along the way before we end up at their server before it ends up on their PC. And so anywhere along that process somebody could stick in some malware that would be looking for um, information off of those emails or somebody could physically just insert themselves into that process mm. and take a look at it. And another thing we talked about in, a, in an earlier program was the fact that if you're doing this on a public network, mm -hmm. uh, say at Starbucks, right. there can be people that are actually viewing what you're right. doing on your screen yep. live as you do it. Right, yeah, and so you've got to be really careful because they use a product called a sniffer, and what a sniffer does is it allows you to see um, the packets of information that are transmitting through the Wi-Fi or through even a network cable if they have physical access to that. That's just a little bit harder to do. Um, and from that packet sniffing, they can then reassemble the information and get a good idea of what's going on on your computer. All right, so the average person that's just, you know, sharing recipes with grandma and things like that, is encryption that important? Only if what you're sending is uh, very important to you and you're sure that you're never going to send something that is sensitive. Okay. Uh, so we, a lot of times we'll have clients that will ask us, well, I, I only want to encrypt the email of two or three of my, my uh, employees because the rest of them never send anything that would be sensitive. And then you have to really kind of quantify what never means because right. maybe they're not supposed to, but would they possibly do it? Or could it be an accident that they might do it? And you know, a lot of times when we start having that conversation, they realize, well, really everybody's at risk for sending information that they shouldn't. And so uh, email encryption services, uh, we use a product called Zix, um, and there are others out there as well, but Zix... Um, Z-I-X. Z-I-X. Right. And what Zix does is it's a, another server, so basically uh, there's a secure client that's loaded onto a PC, um, and when we send out an email, it, it goes encrypted to our server, and then our server hands it off to the Zix server in an encrypted format, um, and then Zix really encrypts it, really, mm -hmm. really you know, massively. So that as it's going through all of these hops that I was talking about, maybe a spam filter, maybe a, another mail server certainly, um, maybe even some other uh, servers along that line, all of that is encrypted. And so those machines can't really look at the content yeah. of that information. And without the key, it's impossible. I, you know, I, yeah. I, I saw a movie uh, about uh, World War II, mm -hmm. and this is, it's interesting, back in the old days, 
before computers, they used encryption as well. Right. And and they had them. The Germans had a machine that they could actually encrypt files with. And unless you had that machine mm -hmm. to break the code and had and had the encryption mm -hmm. key, it was virtually impossible, if right. not completely impossible, for the Allies to, to decrypt right. that message. And it's the same thing now digitally. Yeah. Unless you've got the encryption key, it is virtually impossible. I mean, no right. one can can open it up. Yeah, it's, it's very, very difficult um, to the, the point of uh, being crazy difficult. And so you never say never in, in anything. But the, the types of encryption that are done now, 256-bit uh, encryption, for instance, um, it, it would take you know potentially hundreds of thousands of years to, to crack it. Um, and uh, it is possible that you could stumble on accidentally just the right key combination, but the, the likelihood of that is very, very limited. Yeah. So what we see in the movies a lot of times, is, I mean, this is a plot line in many of the action movies, and especially spy movies, is something's encrypted and, you know, <laughs> within a, you know just a they few... They plug a machine into yeah, it, exactly. and all these numbers roll, and it finally ups up the door. That's really, yeah, in, that's not true. In, in five minutes. Yeah, right, No, right. It, it doesn't work <laughs> like that. Uh, so uh, encryption is a very powerful technology to keep you safe. You know, financial information, uh, security information, maybe uh, uh, special formulas or um, proprietary information related to right. a business. Um, and it could even be, I mean, it is used even for um, things like photos. Uh, not that I recommend uh, any products uh, such as this, but I'll give you an example. Snapchat um, is designed around that same concept. Is the, um, you know, we're going to send pictures in an, in an encrypted format. Um, so that they can't be intercepted, and you're going to try to control what's being sent. Uh, and they last only a few seconds, and they disappear. Exactly. And and again, there's not. It's not that it's impossible to get around that. Um, People forget that you can take your phone, you can press one button and another button, yeah. and, you, and you screenshot, and you've saved it forever. Right. You can do that. And so Snapchat, if, chat, if you're using Snapchat, or your kids are. It's not something that is disappeared forever. If they're fast enough, they can well, grab it. And the other thing you can do is you can take another phone and take a picture of right. what's on the on that phone. And You're so, right. Yeah. You, again, but it's a, it's a great uh, idea related to encryption. Now, I'll give you another example. Um, Apple's iMessage, which is their replacement for text messaging, and works only between Apple and Apple products. This is how Apple, you know, kind of sneaks into your your household and then takes over everything because their stuff works so well together. But um, their their text messaging software is encrypted point to point, and so if I send a if I'm a doctor and I'm under the HIPAA regulations, which say that I cannot transmit anything related to a patient at all unless it's encrypted, or I could be in trouble. I can be in violation of the law, actually. So we actually advise doctors to never ever send text messages, ever, because it's an unencrypted format. However. If it's iPhone to iPhone or iPhone to Mac, uh, that's an encrypted protocol, and it actually, uh, based on the HIPAA laws, is allowable. Yeah. So you know. even then, you're not sure who might be on the other end taking up well, your phone and, and, yeah. and reading it. So I mean, not there. There's virtually with just human interaction, it's impossible to have completely mm -hmm. uh, um, um, locked down communication from point A to point B. But we want to do everything we can to make sure mm -hmm. that nobody intercepts it in, sure. in the middle. So. Uh, if you have a, a, a personal email account, you want to make sure that you're checking on encryption, right. but especially if you have a business account Absolutely. where you're sharing business information that you don't want anybody else right. to see, how do they go to the process called of getting that set up with you? Yeah, so it's very it's a very simple process. Uh, Zix uh, just sits in front of the, the standard email server, and uh, when we send out a, a message or a client sends out a message, it goes through the Zix mail, uh, it analyzes the content of that, determines if it needs to be encrypted, and automatically encrypts it. You also can do it manually. You can say, I want to encrypt this, and you get a little button that's inserted into your mail program uh, for that. But what we really like about Zix is that it will um, check you and make sure that, oh, I, for I, I forgot I should have encrypted that mm -hmm. document. And Zix will look through, and based on the content, it'll say, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm going to encrypt this for you because based on the rules that we've established, this is something that should be done. All right, we only have a couple more minutes. Let's talk about encryption of data that's uh, sitting on your computer. Mm -hmm. uh, your hard drive has got all kind of information on it, and a lot of stuff that you don't even know is still there is still there. Even when you think you've erased it away, it is still there. Right. So we want to make sure that we're protecting our hard drive. Tell me how we encrypt the, the information that's already on someone's hard drive. Yeah. If they bring a computer to you and it says, I've got this computer, I need all this information uh, safe. Does it have to be done as it's being written to the hard drive, or can it afterwards be encrypted? Uh, both are possible, and, uh, but what we want to do is we want to actually uh, encrypt the, the hard drive completely. 
Um, you know, there are container encryptors where uh, you can like do something as simple as take a Microsoft Word document and put a password on it. That'll encrypt that document. Uh, and if you don't know the password, the key, in other words, you can't get the content off of the Word document, Excel spreadsheet, th those types right. of things. Um, so it's a very simple way of doing it. We can also encrypt just a folder on the hard drive so that that one folder needs a special password to be able to get into. But ideally what you want to do is you want to encrypt the entire computer uh, so that if the computer is stolen, even if it's a desktop, somebody can mm. break in and steal it, and that could be a violation of privacy laws, um, or especially if it's a laptop that you're carrying with you, you want to make sure that those are encrypted so that if somebody gets a hold of it, they can't get into the data. Right. Uh, and, you know, now they go in there, format the computer, erase everything off of it, but at least they can't get exposure to the, the sensitive information that may be on there. It could be um, credit card information, it could be personal information, whatever it may be. Um, there are uh, products, Apple has built-in encryption um, that you can turn on. Uh, the file locker uh, capability that they have um, works just, just fine. Um, there is uh, also, uh, in the newer versions of Windows, there's BitLocker, which will do pretty much the same thing. And then there are other programs uh, as well uh, that can do that. Um, and there was a great product called TrueCrypt um, that we actually recommended and used, and we're not quite sure what we're going to do now because it um, the uh, something happened with them in the NSA mm. and they're they're gone. <laughs> they just they just kind of like disappeared one day mm. and so and this is like very recently. So wow. we're we're looking at some paid uh, encryption products that allow us to, to manage the the hard drive and USB drives and thumb drives right, and right. all of these things that might have data on them. They all need to be encrypted. And and don't think that just because you have it in a hidden folder on your computer. Right that it's safe because yeah. I know there's ways to, to actually put data into I, I've actually seen people advertise let us show you how to put things into a hidden folder well anyone that knows anything about computers can find, find a hidden, hidden folder, folder sure. and get into it so yeah. uh, there are some products out there that uh, mm -hmm. that you can do on your own but if you really want an expert to help you uh, figure out what you should be encrypting how to make sure it's encrypted and how to verify that it right. is because we not only want it encrypted we want to make sure that after it's done it is verified that it actually That's is right. working. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to come see the folks at Blau Tech, and uh, on this website, you're going to find lots of information how to get in touch with them, how to get it encrypted. The very first thing we need to do is get something encrypted for our outgoing and incoming data and email first. That's right. And then, if you have sensitive data on your computer, the next step is then to get that information on your hard drive encrypted, and make sure that you never allow anybody that you don't know to plug anything in your computer, mm -hmm. like a thumb drive right. or a SD card. You know, I, I know that a lot of people have gotten viruses mm -hmm. or they've stolen data off of a computer right. because they just allow somebody to stick something in the side of it. Exactly. Yeah, so. and people find USB drives lying outside their business right. and they take them inside and they plug them in and they don't realize that that was a hacker That's that right. now has installed a program onto their computer. Plug it into someone else's computer first. Yeah. Make sure. <laughs> Throw it away. They're cheap. <laughs> Throw it away. You know, if you do, and that, and that is a very common thing that I, I know a lot of people that try to get onto your computer, they just leave a thumb drive laying around. Mm -hmm. And the curiosity makes you want to do it. So just uh, just say no. Yeah. All right, we'd like for you to learn more about what's going on with your uh, with your data protection by uh, visiting blytech.com. And thanks for watching the mainframe right here on blytech.com.